This should make an interesting case study video for anybody interested in knowing about Conrod Bear and Wear on the BMW E92s, E90s, E93 M3s. This is a very rare Oxford Green E92 M3 factory paint 2008 that was spec'd by this owner from brand new. So this owner purchased this car, ordered it himself from BMW and is the technically the only one that's ever driven it, maybe apart from the old road test at a workshop. But it's been in the owner's care since 2008 and it's travelled 113,000 miles. And uh, we have just come to do the Comrade Barons as, um, as it's a commonly required job nowadays, almost a, um, not a prevent, well it is a preventative maintenance, but also a, nearly a consumable Comrade Barons. So we're part way through the process. As you can see, we've got the engine opened and, uh, and we're working our way through the Comrade bearings and bolts replacement starting at the front and we're on the very last one now. That red there is the plastic aid. You can just see the shining reflection of the journal there. And we're um, just doing the final plastic gauge measurement. Now we plastic gauge measure every single position, all eight of them on every engine, on every vehicle that we've ever done Conrad bearings on, as it's in the BMW's instructions. That doesn't give you the most accurate. It's not gonna be as good as uh, micrometer meeting, but you uh, read it. Uh, measuring but you can't do that with the crank in the vehicle so it's the best method of sanity checking um, whilst you've got everything pre-assembled in the engine so that that plastic gauge measuring gives you an oil clearance gap between the journal and the Comrade bearing to make sure there's an oil film which is between the BMW tolerance which on an S65 is 0.027 to 0.076 anywhere within that range now we commonly find the BMW bearings that are quite tight they have a tight tightish clearance uh, around about oh, 0.038 on average depending on the temperature of the engine whether it's stone cold or, or cooling slightly um, whereas we commonly find with the ACL race bearings um, which where we use a Reedish custom mix set a H and a HX bearing just for reference we can normally get around about 0.05 still using the 10W60 engine or I may add but just a minute amount more oil clearance but still under the maximum permissible value so I'll show you the bearings which is the main reason for this video these are the bearings that have come out of the vehicle and as soon as they do come out of the vehicle we use a sharpie pen to identify what cylinder they've come from so a number one through to eight cylinders one to eight and then because there's two bearings per journal we further identify them with a letter so l means lower is in the bottom of the engine what we'd call the cap and u means upper is in the top of the engine what we'd call the comrade now these are the first generation bearings um, these have got part numbers on the back of them that say 088 089 and uh, and these are the like I say the first generation bearings they are made of copper and lead and they came out in um, S65 series production so early 2007 and it went up to around about spring 2010 until BMW changed to the the later bearings which weren't an upgrade they were just a material change the later ones spring 2010 onwards went to aluminium and tin apparently due to the EU requirements of lead being taken out of uh, well vehicles basically so these are made of copper and lead quite soft and these ones wear in in quite a dramatic way um, because they are a fairly soft material shell so we'll show you that there's a few different wear patterns going on here let's take three lower this one here for example um, this one's got about probably the least amount of wear just between my fingers here so what it would have started like originally is this darker gray material just down here that's what the bearings would have started out life like and when that gray material wears away then you get this patch appear which is more of a lighter sort of olive green color and that patch there between my fingers on three lower is the lead content which has been exposed in the bearing and then when you wear through that lead content then you'll uh, expose the copper which is clearly seen here on two many copper strikes actually on three four most of them to be honest and the copper is the last sacrificial layer before the bearing starts breaking up and delaminating and believe me that does happen we've got many many old bearings that we've been able to keep from people's engines that we've taken out that have got craters in them chips out of them pieces missing and obviously when the bearing does start breaking up it really will cause damage to the crankshaft now luckily the bearings hadn't done anything like that on this engine but you can still see the the quite significant wear that's present on these and the other thing is as they wear they will contract they they get hot spots in them some of that copper uh, doesn't stay uniform copper color it gets purples pinks all sorts of colors in it which is a real hot spot and then the bearing actually starts contracting now it can't really 
completely contract because there's a crankshaft journal it's pressing against but it does tighten up so that means it's harder to get off the crank and you get the contact points pressure in on the edges and then you get more of a uh, friction and then you get a thermal runaway reaction where it almost then is inevitable that it's going to narrow, wear more, narrow, wear more. Then the little locating tabs come sort of away from their respective holders in the rod and the bearing cap and then it can at risk spin and then obviously it's game over for the engine and the crankshaft. Now these haven't done any damage to the crank but these are clear to see that they have worn and like I say it's a one owner vehicle. This owner uh, who's had this car from brand new BMW, picked it up himself in 2008, has traveled 113,000 miles. And hopefully you won't mind me saying, but he's an older gentleman, that if my sources are correct, he raced in the Le Mans race series in the 1970s and is very mechanically minded, very respectful for and mechanically sympathetic for engines, uh, frequent oil changes and knows how to deal with racing vehicles. So we'll obviously have been respecting this vehicle, especially because he's the first and only ever owner. Um, so it sort of leads me up to say that it's not anything realistically to do with the way the cars are driven possibly not to do with warm-up cycles. I think there's, there's more and more evidence, especially this sort of case study that we're seeing here, is more to say with it's, with it's, it's almost unlucky. It's to do more with the sort of tolerant stack engines I see, or the way maybe the car's driven, but the car should be absolutely able to keep up and maintain its bearing condition, regardless of where the rev range is or how the vehicle is being used. It's obviously a, a weakish point in the S65 engine. Um, and if you don't know what tolerant stack is, just have a Google. Um, but basically it's where the crankshaft journal is, is it, its maximum permissible value or maximum range in the tolerance. And then the, the Comrod and, and Bearing, for example, are on its minimum, the tightest clearance. So you end up just unfortunate with the, with the components that get picked off of the shelf to assemble the engine, they're at their ones at its maximum, ones at its minimum, and you end up getting very, very tight sections of the engine, uh, which are still within tolerance, but are just unlucky because they're worse off than some other engines. But have a Google of tolerance stack and you'll see um, one of the theories behind it and why people are more and more pointing to that area. Um, some of it might be warm up, but probably not a huge amount. I think that some of it is the way the cars are driven. But like I say, this owner, fastidious owner, I think it's more to do with just a a slightly poor design and design where these bearings probably should have lasted the lifetime of the car, but they're they're clearly not able to make that, and they're um, they they literally need to be considered as a consumable at least once in the car's lifetime. And depending on how long the car is in use, how many miles it clocks up, and how many years it goes on for, it may well need to be considered two times in the car's lifetime. But there we go. That's just our um, our findings on the uh, bearings on a on a vehicle that's been owned from brand new for um, well since 2008 and it's traveled 113,000 miles on an E92 M3 in a wonderful color I should add Oxford green really really rare on an E92 M3 never seen it before but love it and if you're wondering why the uppers are worse than the lowers well that's very common uh, so nothing unusual going on there nothing to worry about and the upper sits in the engine like this this way up not this, it sits like this. And then you've got the comrod on top of this and then the piston on top of this. And then imagine the combustion cycle and the compression stroke when it's being forced downwards. That comrod bearing, the upper one, is being forced into the crankshaft journal. So there's much more chance of contact, which is why you get much more wear on the upper. So that's very normal. It's actually pleasing to see that cycle because that's what we see regularly on engines. And if we didn't have that uh, upper wear more, then I'd be worried, but um, that's quite normal. And I'm really pleased to be able to tell this owner that he got it done at the right time. It could have probably gone on for longer. You might have got another 10, maybe even 20,000 miles out of these. We'll never know. But there's no real point taking the risk when it's so documented that these are a wear issue. Um, and this is probably going to be the, the, the closest we'll get to understanding um, a, a vehicle wear over the lifetime of ownership of one person that's traveled decent miles, 113,000 miles since 2008 and on the original style bearings, the um, 088089 stamp on the back of them. So there we go, that's our findings on this uh, 
like I say, amazing Oxford Green E92 M3. And we're going to carry, up, carry on, um, finish up the plastic age process now. And then we record all the measurements on these. We just don't record video for every single one because it would be well over an hour long and it would be quite repetitive. But all the data that we gather from the other seven, we include in the bolt torque stretch process and the um, torquing cycle. We record that on a spreadsheet and pass that to the owners at the end of the process. So we'll get that plastic cage cleaned off now like we've done on all the others, lubricate the journal for the final time, put that half of the bearing shell in, and then the cap, the bolts, carry out the special torque process, which is six newton meters, 20 newton meters, 130 degree turns that's cycle one then release it cycle two then release it and then cycle three and then it's achieved full tor uh, full, full torsional strength um, and then uh, paint mark the heads yellow and then clean everything up obviously then we need to rebuild the engine so that will be new um, o-rings which go in the oil pumps here and then we'll be cleaning the sump and engine block perimeters installing a genuine BMW sump gasket and Putting the sump back on when the engine's all tight, we'll be filling with Castrol 1060 M power engine oil, a genuine BMW oil filter kit. And uh, once the car is more mechanically complete with its steering rack on, we'll be filling with power steering new fluid, which is CHF 11S. Um, high pressure steering rings which go on the steering rack on the right hand side over here and then when it's more mechanically complete with all its under trays on and things like that we'll start the engine for the first time with the engine and the vehicle up in the air like it is now on the lift we'll be stood underneath it watching monitoring checking for 20 minutes or so whilst it's warming up to temperature when it's achieved full temperature we will request a fresh oil level reading in the iDrive system and when we're happy the oil level is correct we'll be able to then go out and do our standard 12 mile road test that we do on all vehicles that have been with us for Comrade Barons. So hopefully that video is informative and uh, feel free to comment or ask any questions you might have and if you're considering anything like this do have a look at our website readishmotorsport.com and you'll be able to uh, see the type of work and video examples and pictures that we do with the Comrade Baron work on BMW M3 models.